Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to cover a problem that I've been having on my 3D prints as a plate. And I've noticed that some people out there have also had this issue and there's kind of no research and no solution to it. But I did a lot of trial and error and I was finally able to figure out how to get rid of the small bumps on your 3D prints. The first time I noticed that this was happening was actually when I printed my Blue Beetle helmet. And there was a bunch of bumps all over the light blue part of the helmet and I thought I figured out the solution to the problem, but I guess I didn't. After a lot more research and a lot more trial and error, I was actually able to figure out four methods that can fix this problem. So the problem is basically a bunch of blobs and bumps all over your prints. They seem to just pop up everywhere. It could be consistent or non-consistent. Sometimes there's no bumps and sometimes there's bumps all over it. So I'm gonna go over all of the different methods that I took to stopping this problem and share them with you guys. So the first method that I have for you guys to solving this problem is to disable the resume printing function on your printer. So you're just going to go into your settings and then possibly your advanced settings depending on your printer and then just tick off the resume printing button and that's all you have to do, resume print is off. So what the resume print feature is actually doing while it's printing is its memory is saving every second or so where it is on the model that it's printing. It kind of saves a pinpoint, so that way if the power gets shut off, it knows to come back to that point and start from there. So I'm going to make a visual for you guys so that way you can understand it better. So say you're printing off a circle, um, the actual G-code when it slices is not as smooth circle like this. It's actually more of a shape sort of like this, but not as dramatic. The lines are obviously very small, but there are points around it that make the circle. So it's not actually a smooth running circle around the entire print, it's more of a bunch of lines that just connect to make a circle. With the resume print feature on, it actually saves at each of these points. And as it's going around and stopping and saving and stuttering at every point that it's trying to save at, it's gonna over extrude and leave a blob like this. So as it goes around and makes the circle, it'll keep making continuous blobs, kind of like this drawing here. And then all of a sudden you have blobs all around your print. So next up we have changing the extruder nozzle. Now this also kind of goes hand in hand with making sure that your printer is built correctly. Make sure there's no loose nuts or bolts that are on it um, and change your extruder frequently. To change out the nozzle, just go on your printer, go to the prepare and go to temperature and make the nozzle temp somewhere between 240 and 260. And once the hot end is completely heated, just take the wrench included with your 3D printer, unscrew the nozzle and then screw the new one on. Extruder nozzles are consumables over time, over thousands of hours or hundreds of hours that you're printing and long periods of time being on such a high heat, the brass and metal that's inside of them are gonna deform a little bit, but a little bit makes it a big problem. So sometimes it can be over extruding and it'll just melt too much at once and blob up. So the next fix that I have for you guys is to install arc welder onto your slicer. I'm on Cura, and if you go up to Marketplace and just type in ARC, um, it will pop up, and then you're just gonna click install. Head over to your settings, go to special modes, and then tick on arc welder. Now I don't usually change any of the settings, I just leave it how it is, but if you know what you're messing with, then you can go ahead and change it. Now just to give you guys a visual of what this setting does, I'm going to go back to the drawing that I made earlier. Every model that you have, every um, file that you have that you're going to slice and make a G-code of to print isn't perfect. So even if you downloaded a circle or a sphere, it's actually a bunch of really small polygons and a bunch of small lines. So this could potentially lead to a stutter or an over extrusion, which does cause blobbing. And the good thing about this setting is not only does it fix this problem, but it can also help just the look of your prints in general. I've noticed they're a lot more sharper where they need to be and more rounded where they need to be. So enabling this arc welder setting is like a must have. The next solution I have for this problem is drying out your filament. Here I have Sunlu's version 2 of their filament dryer and it goes for about $50 on Amazon. So this is a little pricey but if you live in a humid environment or the only place that you can store your printer is in somewhere like a garage where it could potentially get some moisture or humidity, 
these are a must have. Um, I've used it on basically any roll of filament that I have when I get it. I always throw it in here real quick and dry it out for about four to six hours and I let it sit. Set it up, just open the lid, place your filament inside, close the lid, turn it on by pressing one of the two buttons in the front, and then you're going to want to crank the temperature up to about 50 degrees Celsius, then set the timer for anywhere between four to eight hours, usually six is the sweet spot, so six hours is plenty of time. I don't think you can over dry filament, but I wouldn't recommend doing it over eight hours. Another neat feature that's included with this filament dryer is it actually has a small gap where you can place your filament through, which allows you to dry out your filament while using it. In case you're in a rush to print something, you can dry it while printing. When you get your filament from Amazon or anywhere and it comes in the plastic bag, sometimes those bags have rips in them or the little packet of, uh, I can't remember what it's called, the stuff that keeps the moisture out, um, you know, absorbs this, that way it doesn't get into the product. Sometimes those fill up with moisture or they fall out of the packaging or whatever the case may be. Maybe it's even the area that you're storing it in has a lot of humidity or moisture in the air. A dryer will help extract all of that moisture out so that way your filament is completely dry. So I actually have two pieces of filament right here. This one has been exposed to humidity and now has moisture in it and this one is completely dry. I wanna show you guys real quick an easy way to find out if you need a filament dryer or not. So this stuff is dry. And as you can see, there's a lot of flex to it. Eventually it'll break apart, but it takes a lot more work versus this one that has been exposed to moisture. And as you guys can see, it breaks a lot easier. Um, it can't withstand any sort of pressure whatsoever. It might even break while you're printing, but basically if it breaks really easily, then it has moisture in it, which is weird because you would think stronger it is that it would be more hydrated, I guess, but when it's hydrated, it breaks easy. So while editing this video, there were a couple of other solutions that I found because I started doing it again to my printer. And I really thought after that arc welder setting, it was all fixed, but I guess not. Two more solutions that I have for you guys in case this is still happening to you is one, make sure you stay on the same slicer. I actually changed from just regular Kira to the Elegoo port of Kira. And for some reason, that Elegoo port does not go well with my Neptune 3 Pro. Every time I've ever sliced anything on there, it's had that issue. And also another thing that could help is make sure that your SD card powerful enough or is large enough or formatted to take your files because I changed the SD card out and now it's working amazing again. I just printed off this piece right here and it's working amazing again. So make sure you guys check your SD card and your slicer. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it was informative. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.